Well, the 2024 season hasn't really truly begun, and already the 2025 season is dropping bombshells as Lewis Hamilton has announced he's going to be racing for Ferrari. But as he enters his 12th season for Mercedes, what does the future look like for the Silver Arrows? And what about Ferrari with Lewis Hamilton wearing that red suit? Well, I'm Bryn Lucas, and joining me is F1 editor John Noble. Now, John, this seems to start with like one of those big seminal moments in your life. So before we dive into the story, where were you when you found out that this was imminently about to land on our laps? Oh, well, this is classic. So normally... Uh... You know, mornings are quite quiet. So I was at the dentist randomly this morning, sat in the uh, waiting room, waiting for the, the dentist and hygienist and just chatting to some people, saying, oh, there's some rumours, this is happening. So between going to the dentist, sending text messages around, going to the hygienist, then I could hear, hear my phone going a bit mad. Second I walked out, the hygienist spoke to somebody on the phone, basically says it, it's happening. That, you know, someone I... Uh, kind of would know what's going on and then we're away so uh, it kind of reminds me the randomness of these big stories reminds me of I remember we broke the story about Verstappen going to Red Bull years and years and years ago I was out on a bike ride and I just remember sitting on a sitting on a random gate somewhere texting Christian Horner and Red Bull and all this sort of thing and took a, took a photo which I've probably got around somewhere but yeah so Lewis to Ferrari dentist for stepping to Red Bull, random gates. I mean, it's all glamour, isn't it? I've just got <laughs> an image of you, you know, your mouth open, having to spit every now and then, and then, you know, this big moment hitting you. I was in the gym, you know. I'm trying to get this this honed and toned specimen in front of you to try and look like you used to, and it's taken me a bit of effort. So I was on the, on the bike in the gym when it all came through, and it was one of those sort of unbelievable moments. You think, wow, okay, this is, this is big. So what about your reaction then when you were sitting back there, you know, <laughs> at the... Uh, beck and call of the, the the dentist when this phone started to buzz what was going on i think it's shock actually isn't it i mean there's been rumors it's not a it's not a you know something completely out of the blue in terms of you know the lewis links to ferrari um i think he said in the past it's the, the one team he would consider you know occasionally it would it would flare up there'd be some rumors that it could happen but often it was contract negotiating times you know is this ferrari trying to strengthen their hand and get their current drivers to cut what their, their demands or was this lewis trying to get more out of mercedes but that it's happened, I think it, you know, it, it sends shockwaves through Formula One. I think, think we all, you know, deep down believe Lewis would see out his career at Mercedes. It seemed a, uh, you know, this, this unique bond, someone who entire F1 career had been with Mercedes engines. So to make this switch uh, to, to F1's, you know, most mythical team, it's almost unbelievable, isn't it? It doesn't seem real at this moment in time. It's a mouthwatering prospect. How long do you think that this whole conversation has been going on and this is contract been in the pipeline well i think it's one of these things that i mean as lando norris mentioned last week we we're speaking to him about interest in red bull and interest in ferrari he says you know every driver speaks to every team it's part of the part of the business we're in teams need to know what drivers are up to drivers need to know what teams are up to and sometimes they find themselves on a common path and talks advance so i think lewis has openly you know talked about it's been to john elkin several times in the past he's known fred vasseur for years and years and years, they've been, you know, part of a, a family together as they've, they've grown up through the ranks. So, you know, at some point, some factors tripped into play that has made Lewis think, you know, maybe my future's not Mercedes. Maybe it's Ferrari. It's the, you know, the last dance. I mean, is this related to competitiveness? Has he seen that Mercedes cannot plot its way out of its current struggles? And because if they don't get this car right, they won't have the resources to sort 25 out. And then it's a new rules reset in 26. Is it competitive? Is there something else going on in the background? Um, we don't know. But, you know, if there's one thing in Formula 1 that any driver wants, it's what Michael Schumacher wanted, it's what Fernando Alonso wanted, it's probably what Ayrton Senna would have wanted if he had, you know, seen out the end of his career uh, racing. Uh, and now Lewis Hamilton's got it. The chance to be a Formula 1 driver for Ferrari and potentially win the championship for Ferrari, you know, you, you're, in the, you're in the history books, aren't you? I want to come to the, the subtleties of it and what may have made him jump at this opportunity. I, mean, I think we can always see why anybody would want to jump and race for Ferrari. But it was my understanding that he had a contract running to the end of 2025. So how did it all go down at Mercedes? And, and how has he managed to get out that additional year? Was it a, a, maybe a break clause in that contract? Yeah, I think we, we generally have these kind of option contracts. It's, you know, one plus one, two plus two, two plus three, all these sort of thing. On We never know this the kind of nitty gritty of details teams like keeping them secrets drivers don't talk about them at all um so from what we understand 
when Lewis signed his two-year deal last year, it wasn't a firm two-year deal. It was a one plus one. Um, and there must have been some, you know, escape clauses in that contract, um, maybe triggered by him, uh, that allow him to be a, a free agent. And I think if Ferrari are pushing hard to get him and, you know, if he'd potentially committed for 26, then it makes sense to to just go early. There's no point committing for the long term if you're going elsewhere. And we saw it with, for example, Andreas Seidel, uh, team principal at McLaren, has signed this long-term contract with Audi. So I guess the point of what's the point of carrying on? Let's just make the switch and get it going. So, but what will be interesting is if it's happening for 25, then sometimes in these scenarios, it makes sense just to cut it now and we make a change. So is there something around that's going to be sooner than 25? Who knows? Well, well, I want to swing back around to something you just said. I mean, that was really interesting. You know, maybe, maybe it'll happen before that. But let's just swing back around to something you said earlier about the reasons he may have gone. Is it that he's seen something in the car that he doesn't think it's going to be competitive? Well, Lewis Hamilton has always been pushing, hasn't he? Been pushing that team and everyone around him to to raise their level. Are we? Can we draw on this at this early stage before even we're up and running in twenty twenty four that he just sees that Mercedes haven't made the the in would steps or the upward steps that he was hoping. Yeah, I think when I think we need to see what he says and what his reaction is and, and the reasoning. I think there's there's kind of multiple factors here at play. I think, you know, ha- has he reached a stage in his career where he needs a fresh motivation that, you know, all drivers talk about this kind of factor of you just need that need that challenge and need that push and something to get you out of bed in the morning and be ultra competitive. You know, it's why Michael Schumacher, you know, dominant with Bennett in the early nineties, that Ferrari attraction was there despite the success. It's why Fernando Alonso you know, move to McLaren after the success with Todd's with, with, with Renault. They want something different. And we had an interview with Lewis Hamilton last year in Abu Dhabi, reflecting on the season, his contract, you know, was there ever a time you felt like walking away? And in the middle of that interview, just talked about the raw excitement that comes when you join a new team, you know, getting involved in the details, digging into finding performance, finding improvement. I think that's something you can't get your current team. So, you know, has he reached a point in his, in his life where doing the same thing for Mercedes the rewards of more titles for Mercedes, you know, don't mean as much as imagine going to Ferrari and ending their title drought. Uh, and, you know, being a, you know, can you imagine what Monza is going to be like now with uh, you know, Lewis out there? Just that, that, that focal point for them, the Ferrari brand, um, absolutely massive. I mean, we look just now at the Ferrari share price today. It's up, I think, 6% on the day. So, you know, added billions and billions and billions already to their market cap. Uh, you know, already paid for his contract. Yeah, that was just sent to me, actually. I'm going to kind of drag it up as well because it was incredible. I mean, it just says here that uh, Ferrari's share price has jumped 6% today on a market cap of $66 billion. His news is worth $4 billion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is insane, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but this is the, you know, these are the big figures you're talking about. This shows the value of both Lewis Hamilton and shows the value of Ferrari itself as well. It's a you know, massive move, perhaps the biggest biggest shock we've had in Formula 1 for a while. I think, um, you know, the, the last big shock like this was Nico Rosberg, you know, quitting on the spot at the FIA Awards after he won that championship. Um, but I think this in terms of driver moves, completely out of the blue, catching most people on the hop, uh, it's right up there. Now, it's going to be really interesting, isn't it, to see how Lewis gets on. He's raced Mercedes power units for his entire career, pretty much. And then he's going to be stepping into the Ferrari power unit. He's going to be red in the, wearing the red of Ferrari, as we say, from 2025. How is he going to fit in, though, at the Scuderia? Is he going to be a, a hit from the off? Is he going to be demanding, more demanding than they're used to? I think he will be demanding, but that's exactly why they've hired him. They want someone pushing that team on, uh, and you want to deliver those you know, tiny marginal gains at the difference between being second and being first. Um, I think the Tifosi will absolutely worship him. Um, I think they've always had this kind of affinity with British drivers. We saw it with Nigel Mansell, you know, Il Leone, absolutely loved him. They love the fighters. Someone who's ready to you know, take it on, battle with Max Verstappen. Um, in Lewis Hamilton, they've got exactly that. So for the fans, it's great. For the Ferrari brand, it's great. It brings in the speed, the experience, uh, the motivation. And I think, you know, a fired up, uh, eager Lewis Hamilton in a competitive Ferrari is something that, you know, will be great for Formula One. He's got a year to master the Italian language, hasn't he? <laughs> Has he started the lessons already? Who knows? It'd be hilarious if he's. Uh, we found out he's been completely fluent for years now. <laughs> it's going to be one of these things. That I don't think we can. any of us can wait now for 2025 to come around, but we've got to get through 2024 first, and, and that kicks off in, in, in just a few weeks' time. 
we kind of mentioned what the fans are going to love about what Lewis and what Lewis could really uh, do for Ferrari. But what are we expecting Lewis to deliver for Ferrari? What is he going to bring them that somebody else may not? I think it's the, the it's the focal point of a multiple world champion, basically. There's this kind of magic ingredient that we, we saw at Aston Martin with Fernando Alonso. Uh, you see it at Red Bull with Max Verstappen. Um, you know, it's hard to, hard to kind of pinpoint what the exact benefit is, but I think it's the, the belief in the team. Um, I mean, they're going to have two incredible drivers. Lewis and Leclerc is a great lineup. You know, different skills. We know Charles is, you know, tremendous natural talent. Clearly, Ferrari's super long-term future. You know, Leclerc's career is going to go on long beyond Lewis's, um, just because they're at different ages, different stages of their career. Um, but you've got a confirmed world champion, hugely motivated to get on and deliver. Um, great technical knowledge. Um, knows exactly what it takes to win in Formula One. How much you've got to knuckle down and push and push and push um, to find the find all those elements that come together to, to make you a winner. I think that's exactly what Ferrari have signed him up for. And he'll have this, you know, huge, huge effect of um, lifting the whole Ferrari team. I've got a, a Ferrari photo over my shoulder. I've always been a bit of a Ferrari fan, a Ferrari lover, not just in Formula One, but in general. Uh, and Ferrari have always had a unique ability to be able to clutch defeat from the jaws of victory, haven't they? So this is something that Lewis Hamilton is going to have to grab them by the scuff, uh, scruff of the neck and say, we need to stop doing this because he will demand a certain level that maybe other drivers in recent years haven't quite managed to grab hold of. Yeah, I think if he's he will obviously have asked for gar- certain guarantees about you know input. He's not going there to you know jump in the car and be told this is the setup direction we're going in. This is what you're doing. This is development. He'll have been going in. They want his feedback. They want his input. They want him to lead this team and push it forward. So I think he he knows he'll be listened to. Um, he knows there'll be elements there that he'll find out. So we should be doing this. We should be doing this. And there'll be other bits. To go. That's brilliant. That's exactly what we should be doing. So it's almost a kind of confirmation of what they've done already and where they need to go um, with a driver who, you know, when Lewis Hamilton has a car underneath him that can win a race, we know how good he is. Yeah, and he's pre- potentially still got quite a few years ahead of him at this level if he's got the right car and the right impetus. What about, um, he changed his management team re- recently, didn't he? Changed and linked up with his old friend Mark Hines. Can you tell us a bit about, about that relationship, about Mark, and, and whether or not this may have helped propel him over to Italy. Yeah, we don't. I don't know if the if the two things are kind of directly linked, but you can sense there's been a bit of kind of maybe some soul searching from Lewis this winter about just you know where things are at. Um, you know, two years of you know fairly difficult times at Mercedes, and you know sensing things are turning around. So you know maybe in his head it's been you know I need to. It's time to do things differently. Uh, time to kind of make a change. But you know he and Mark go back years and years and years. I think they both understand each other. Mark's, you know, former F3 champion, understands the racing world, understands those those roots that Lewis has come from as well, which, you know, to Lewis, we know how much, you know, inspired he is by kind of his childhood and coming through the ranks the way he did to, to reach the very top. Um, so I think, it's a, you know, that's a good harmonious relationship. And I think, I think it's time that I suspect Lewis wants this fresh challenge, wants that kind of raw excitement I talked about earlier of doing something different and embarking on, uh, something that's going to have form- all of Formula One excited. And I doubt he'd be going there if he didn't sincerely think that world title number eight could be on the agenda. No, absolutely not. I mean, I think we all know how hungry Lewis is for that eighth world championship. When I reflect on that interview in Abu Dhabi, we, we were talking you know, about his you know, feelings on the career and talked about if, if the two years had actually bizarrely lengthened his career rather than shortened it, if, it, you know, if Abu Dhabi 21 had... Um, you know, had a different outcome on the final lap and he'd grabbed his eighth championship there. And Mercedes had delivered a brilliant car for the Grand Effect era and got, you know, championships nine and 10 now. I think maybe Lewis would have gone off into the sunset perfectly happy with his lot and found his fresh motivation outside. But I think what's happened is, you know, despite the stresses and he says, you know, that, that stress knocks can, you know, knocks years off your life when you go through stressful times. But I think it's probably lengthened his career. I think it's kind of, made him think about what motivation he wants, what's going to drive him on, what does he need to push forward to. And I think, I don't think he can walk away after what happened in Abu Dhabi 21. I think, don't think he can walk away without feeling he's given everything he can for that eighth championship. Yeah, wounded Lewis Hamilton's a dangerous beast, isn't he really? <laughs> now, you hinted there earlier on that, that Charles Leclerc is going to be alongside him. It's going to be a, a, a driver partnership, a driver pairing that, 
uh, is mouth-watering from a prospect. And that means that Carlos Sainz will be leaving his seat at the end of 2024. But where's he going to go? And is this going to start a big old merry-go-round? We know that this season is going to be a decent, silly season, as we always call it. But we think 2024 is going to be the silliest of silly seasons. But, you know, what's it mean for Carlos Sainz and the other drivers around him? Yeah, it's intriguing trying to trying to think of the drive market. We, we've had some discussions in the office today just in terms of, you know, where this leaves Mercedes because there aren't many... You know, super top line options now as a, a Hamilton replacement. Um, you know, Max Verstappen isn't going anywhere from Red Bull. Landon Norris has just signed a long deal. Piastri is all locked up. Fernando Alonso is it? You know, is he now too old? And d- does he not want that potential? You know, the disruption, political disruption that's been talked about in the past. Um, Leclerc's signed up. There aren't many. You know, people you think are automatically ready to win lots of races in a championship available to to slot in. Um, and I think this is something Mercedes are going to have to work through themselves. Do they want a, you know, a, a potential stopgap one or two years, you know, signs himself perhaps. Um, you know, he's a race winner, understands racing at the front, good technical knowledge. Do they want someone like that while they ponder long-term options? Alex Albon, you know, someone else who's hugely, hugely impressive. Um, and I think Mercedes will know a lot about him through what he's done at Williams with Mercedes engines. So, you know, he could be a lineup. Uh, and then you've also got, remember in the background, Kimi Antonelli, the Mercedes junior, he's come up, he's an F2 this year. I mean, is there a scenario where Kimi is sensational in Formula 2, dominates that championship, and Mercedes take a massive gamble, knowing they've got George Russell, you know, established, can win races. Um, they know how quick he is, has, you know, been wheel to wheel with Lewis. You know, is, is it a, a time for a new direction? for Mercedes, and you don't go for that established winner, you go for the potential youngster long-term with a stopgap in between. And I think Sainz will be mindful of that. Obviously, there's, he's been linked to Audi quite strongly. Does Aston Martin, do they need someone to replace Fernando if he doesn't go beyond next year or the year after? So I think don't think Sainz isn't going to be left on the scrap heap. He'll, he'll end up somewhere. But I think it's decision. a lot of decisions to be made and all these fantastic kind of jigsaw pieces slotting in together. Or, and it's just popped into my head, what about signs alongside Verstappen at Red Bull. Potentially, that's another option. Could be. I mean, there's. I think there's tons and tons of options and scenarios playing out with many factors. It's like this, you know, we always talk of the silly season. It's all kind of just slotting in the little pieces together and what, what people are at and where their time frames are at. Um, and I think for those drivers who perhaps aren't involved in it, like Lando said last week, uh, you know, it's great to I can just sit back and watch the chaos unfold around me. Uh, and I can just focus on making my car quicker. Just chucking the popcorn in as it all goes. <laughs> well, right. So what about the relationship then, the dynamic between Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc? Do we know what they're like together, whether they'll complement each other or whether there'll be a certain period in the season that Lewis seems to have with a lot of his other drivers and his teams where all of a sudden they become a big threat or he's not in the position he'd like to be and then a bit of needling happens? Yeah, I think but I think there's, the, there's what I call inevitable comp- competitive tensions that you know, top Formula One drivers would not be top Formula One drivers if they were happy finishing second or being beaten by their teammate at all. You know, they go out there to be quickest in every session, quickest in qualifying, outperform them in a race and make sure they get a faster lap. It's just the nature nature of the beast, basically. And all the top drivers are exactly the same. So I've no doubts that, you know, Leclerc will want to beat Hamilton. Hamilton will want to beat Leclerc. But I don't think, I don't think from their personalities and the way they get on and the fact they're also kind of different stages of their career. It's not like they're both coming in after same number of years, same number of wins and fighting for supremacy. I think they're in different places in their life, different places in their career. So I think it can work quite well. Um, and I don't think it would descend into the kind of the the needle we had perhaps between Rosberg and Lewis. Although couching that, remember how much bigger friends Nico and Lewis were before they uh, were battling wheel to wheel for wins. What did Lewis call Bottas his best ever teammate, wasn't it? Because he was the least <laughs> of the threat, I think is the way you read into it. What did you call it? Inevitable competitive tension. Yeah. ICTs. We're going to know it as an ICT. <laughs> we're going to abbreviate that forever. Uh, what about Fred Vasseur then? What's his part in this equation? He and, and Lewis have had quite a, a long standing relationship, if my understanding is correct. Yeah. So it goes back to the junior career. You know, Fred's, Fred's come up the, the racing ladder. Um, Lewis raced for him uh, in GP2, uh, successful. So they've kind of known each other. They've not been together much on the, the Formula One journey, but Fred, uh, you know, Fred was flatmates with Toto Wolff 
um, for a while when he moved to England, when he was working for the uh, Renault team. Um, I think they've been in touch in the paddock. They're very, very friendly. Fred knows everyone in the paddock. Uh, and I think Fred's probably been pretty instrumental in getting this deal across the line. Um, you know, Lewis would want reassurances about com- competitiveness, vision, future, all this sort of thing. And Fred knows, Fred knows the game. He knows how the, the paddock works. Um, and he's got what he wanted. You know, Lewis Hamilton in red overalls. What's going to happen this year, 2024? I know it's an impossible question so early on, but you are the oracle of all things, aren't you, John? You know, what are we going to see from Lewis Hamilton in 2024 and Mercedes in that relationship? Is Lewis going to be just sort of sitting there accepting that he's not going to get victories, perhaps? Or is he going to continue to fight? Because he, he's always been a fighter in his career, hasn't he? Yep. The second that race, you know, Crash Hamilton's on, the visor comes down, it's, you know, business as usual. I mean, there will be elements of, you know, technical developments, meetings, um, all those aspects long term going forward that Lewis won't be involved on. Uh, you know, George Russell will be t- tasked with all that as they kind of look to the future. Um, you know, again, situation where it's obvious teams aren't going to give drivers access to all their secrets going forward. So there will, there will be an element of Lewis being sidelined a bit from that. But when it comes down to the race weekend, it's in Mercedes's interest as much as Lewis's to get the best result on that race weekend. Um, and I think we've seen in the past when, you know, Schumacher signed for Ferrari, we've seen Fernando Alonso race on, I think, at Renault when he was joining McLaren and then Renault when he joined Ferrari. You know, drivers can stay on at teams knowing they're going on elsewhere. Um, there's a small element of awkwardness to it, but when the racing's on, it doesn't really make any difference. They're all interested in getting the, the team's interested in getting its two cars as far forward as possible. Uh, and I, there isn't a scenario in the world where, you know, if Lewis is on pole, and George is second or third. There'll be engineering scenarios to scupper Lewis deliberately. They'll be interested in getting both cars as far forward as possible. And Lewis, Lewis will be giving everything as well to ensure that happens. And then 2025, we say he's going to get into that red Ferrari, that beautiful red Ferrari. It's always a beautiful red Ferrari every single year. What can Lewis expect to achieve on that in that first season? Is he going to be able to deliver from the off or is it going to be a slow burner? I think a lot depends on the car, obviously. Ferrari, just as Mercedes are doing, revamping the car for this year, trying to build on kind of understanding the mistakes they made last year. Um, we expect everyone to kind of more converge on the this kind of Red Bull downwash. Well, down, we call it downwash, but it's the wide side pods um, which kind of feed into the, the floor and diffuser. And this, this is the key to, to extra performance. Um, so I think they'll all shift in this direction. There's high hopes from both Ferrari and Mercedes that, there will be a step forward. So, but I think if Ferrari p- can produce a winning car this year, then I see no reason why Lewis isn't absolutely straight on it the second he, he gets in there. Um, you know, I think there, there are some quirks to these cars. They aren't, I don't think anyone, engineers or drivers are particularly infused by, you know, the way these cars are, you know, rocket stiff, running as low to the floor as possible, um, all those different elements. But I don't think there'll be an acclimatization phase. Uh, and I think 25 is a good time to start because, gives Lewis a good run into 26, which I think is the, the golden opportunity for everyone with their all new rules, new power units, new aero, new philosophy. And that's, I think, just as Lewis at Mercedes in 2013 was the, the stepping stone to 14 when, with the new era. It'll be the same, exactly the same process for Ferrari. We have mentioned or focused a lot of this on Ferrari and how Ferrari are going to do in 2025 with Lewis. But what about Mercedes? How big a hole does that leave in the Mercedes team? And what can they do to plug that gap? Is it going to be for Mercedes an opportunity? Challenges always seem to be turned into opportunities when you talk to management, don't they? So what sort of opportunity, in inverted commas, is this for the Silver Arrows? Well, I think in the short term, it is a blow. You know, any team losing someone of the calibre of Lewis is you know not something you'd openly accept or be happy about but you know these things happen it's formula one it's happened before many times in history that teams lose top drivers and it'll happen again many many times um i think again it comes down to the 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 philosophy of what they want from their their drivers are they going to try and you know chase the more established experienced person to to come in and sit alongside george or do you use these next two years as the kind of the stepping stone into 26, be it someone like Kimi Antonelli, be it someone like Alex Albon, um, kind of start building that platform and plotting the the recovery to the front. Because I think everyone's, while there are short-term competitive aims for 24, I think really people are 
being much more mindful about laying the foundations 26 and beyond. It'd be disrespectful to say that Lewis has just jumped into this with two feet because I'm sure he's put a lot of thought into moving to Ferrari and it's a, a dream for many, many drivers. But do you think this is more of a heart decision or a head decision or do you think he's he's spent a lot of time mulling over the pros and cons of making the switch? Probably a bit of both, I think. I think you can't ignore the heart element, you know, the attraction of racing for Ferrari. Um, any Any Formula 1 driver would love the opportunity of racing for Ferrari. I think there's still something magical, mythical about it. And I think Lewis, you know, would like nothing more than to be standing on the top step of the Monza podium, for example, in front of the Tifosi, having won a race for Ferrari. You know, life in Formula One doesn't get much better than that. So there has to be a heart element to it. Um, but equally, he won't have ignored his head. He'll have, you know, weighed up the competitiveness of the car, the package, where they're going, what they're doing. Um, and I think in his head too, as a part of self-reflection, you know, what is going to keep him enthused in Formula One, the motivation, uh, what's going to keep him engaged and knuckle down to find those kind of extra elements he needs to to deliver at the top. So I I think both elements are important and I don't think one would have, the heart wouldn't have completely outweighed the head. I don't think it's a a decision spare of the moment based on all the the history of Ferrari I'm going. It would have been, you know, some of that attraction, but I think a lot of intelligent reasons behind it as well. McLaren won world titles. Mercedes won world titles. Ferrari yet to be decided, but it's a heck of a legacy, isn't it? It's a great career. Three of the big boys, the big guns. Yeah, exactly. It will be fascinating, uh, you know, to see exactly how it how it plays out. Um, and I think if if Lewis can sign off his Formula One career, I know our, our colleague. Uh, Roberto Kinkro wrote an analysis piece this morning called it, you know, the potential last dance that this this is this will be Lewis's last kind of big contract in Formula One. Um, so he's likely to see out his career at Ferrari. Uh, I think it could be something that goes down just as we, you know, reflect on Schumacher's era there, for example. You know, I don't think potentially will go on as long as Schumacher was able to do it. And I think it's very, very difficult to win, a, you know, the consecutive amount of world championships um, especially when you're going up against the might of a, you know Red Bull and Verstappen at the moment as well. So it's a tough ask to, to to be as dominant kind of in this era against competition like that than it was back in the early 2000s. But I think any if he can even grab one championship for Ferrari, I think it would be an amazing sign off for him. Going to put it to you that he wins one title and he retires. Yep, could be. But then these are these are racing drivers, aren't they? If you win one title, they inevitably going to go, uh, maybe I'll stick around for another year and have another go. They can't let it go, can they? Which is what makes them so competitive and so brilliant. But, you know, it's just that that quest to win. And I think the real winner, I think Ferrari a real winner, but the real winner is Formula One out of this because getting to see Lewis Hamilton in a Ferrari, is it's a dream ticket for many fans, whether you love Ferrari or not. I mean, I suppose if you're a Mercedes fan, you're going to be, you know, <laughs> in the doldrums for a few days at least. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Th- Today I'm not because I um, when I'm working at home, my you know kids are around and my wife's around. We sometimes talk about Formula One stories, and most of the time, straight over their head, not interested. And today I said, "Oh, have you heard the Lewis stuff?" They asked what happened. Wow, this is amazing! I've had text messages and from various people saying, "Is it true? What's going on?" So there is, I think, there's a cut through from this story that you know sometimes a lot of Formula One stories remain very close in the paddock, excite us but don't potentially engage people outside. Whereas I think this this will cut through. This is a massive story um, that can only serve to help everyone in Formula 1. Yeah, you'll be going to the dentist tomorrow hoping for some more stories of similar, <laughs> similar ilk, won't you? Who else is going to leave? The, form, the, form, the formula for great success when I go to the dentist. It used to be when I was on planes. I remember years ago, whenever I was on a plane, they announced drivers. So maybe now it's got a... Um, the magic dent. How times have changed, John. How times <laughs> have changed. Look, thanks very much indeed. No doubt we'll hear a lot more as this story evolves. Where will Carlos Sainz end up? And what does that mean for the rest of the grid? Well, don't forget, hit the subscribe button as we get ready for the Formula One launch with Haas coming up very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. 